Good morning. I had a little head nod there. We're looking at the router and figuring out our sound, and we hope that you're hearing crystal clear. And if not, just let us know in that chat feature, and we'll sort that out. My name's Ian. I'm Lauren. This is Bars and Bells, and welcome to the beginner body weight and bell practice, where we'll use our body weight and some kettlebells off to the side. First in the position comfortable for you, I'll choose my sumo stance. Press the feet into the floor, one hand on the belly and one hand on the chest. Looking for maximal room, take a breath into the belly, filling it up in through the nose and out through the nose. Repeat one more time as you breathe into that belly. Feel it rise and fill and exhale. Now for two repetitions, the bottom hand stays calm and breathe into the chest. Exhale. It's likely as you breathe into the chest, the shoulders will shrug. So breathe in, looking to fill 360 around the rib cage. Exhale. Repeat a belly breath in, fill it full and hold for four seconds. Exhale. Breathe into the chest, four seconds full. Hold and exhale. And a breath, breath into the belly. Hold. Breath into the chest. Hold. And exhale. One last time, big belly breath in. And hold full. And now breathe into that chest next. And exhale. Add a wiggle, shake it out. I'll be in top of the head, in charge of the head. Lauren will be in charge of those feet. In a stance again, comfortable for you, mix it up or keep it the same. At the head neck, modestly rotate, looking over your left shoulder. Then look up towards the ceiling. Then look back towards where that chin is level and then return to center. Alternate to the other side. Rotation, look up the wall towards the ceiling and then back down and center. Repeat in a rotation, but this time a modest chin nod, the chin may touch that clavicle, then back to level and center. And last rotation, little chin nod, look center and return. We'll return to that in one more moment. Until then, little three variation squats, their ankle stuff. With our feet directly underneath us, facing forward, gently press your knees towards over your toes, and then stand up tall, extending your hips and squeezing your butt. Repeat again, knees over toes, extend to tall. Last one, knees over toes, heels heavy, toes heavy, press into the floor, and grow up to that two-footed balance for three, two, and then control your descent down. From there, gently turn out, squeezing your glutes, slight position of your feet in that V, same thing, grip the floor, knees press over toes, you're sliding down that wall, and then drive down and away to stand up tall. Again, pull the feet together, knees press over the toes, drive down and away to tall, extending fully, and last time, pulling together, and then knees pressing over, sorry, knees growing tall, and find that two-footed balance up here, holding for four, three, two, and then control the down. From here, do a little point, toe ball, heel, land. Same thing, before you go anywhere, feel that pull together underneath you, and then knees over toes. Send it down and away to tall. Repeat, pull your knees over your toes. Send it down and away to tall. And last time, pulling those knees together over your toes, down and away to tall. And one last time, grow up to do your balance. Ian, talk for a second. And then slowly pull your toe ball here, point, close. I think you should just take your mic off. Our 
right. Sorry, we've been having a little bit of touch and go issues here with our mics, and we're just trying to figure it out. So we're going to return to that head neck in a stance comfortable for you. It just looks so much better with those lapels on. All right. We're hopefully, again, that solves some of those sound issues here. In a stance comfortable for you, I'll revisit that sumo stance. This time, look to draw figure eights at that head. The neck will not move very much, but the head explores those movements throughout. So rotate first. Add the rotation. Look up towards the ceiling. Trace the nose to center. Pull the crown high as we go down. From here, trace the collarbone on the other side, looking at your neighbor or out the window, and then up the wall to the ceiling. In center, pull the head on straight. Switch your direction. So I'll rotate towards Lauren this time, then look up the wall, nice and slow to center. Pull the crown high, chin low, and then slowly again, scrape the collarbone the other direction, looking at the window or wall, towards the ceiling, and then nice and controlled finish in center. Low numbers of reps, explore the head to move, and the neck will stabilize that movement. One more time, working on those squats as we'll do a little bit of some goblet squatting today. Excellent. Back to our parallel stance. Let's press our knees over our toes and then extend to tall. Everything pulls up, squeezes. One more time, knees over toes and tall. I lied, one more. Number three, knees over toes. This time, can we find that bent knee balance, trying to leave the heels, pressing into those toes for three, two, heels come back down, extend to tall. Pivot, same thing here. Pull that floor together to press the knees over the toes, drive down and away to tall. Again, pull the floor together, knees over toes, down and away to tall. And we have one more on that bent knee balance, pulling the floor together. This time, can the heels leave the floor for three, two, then heels come back down, extend to tall. Last one, point, pull the floor, knees press over toes, down and away. Fully extend at the top, repeat, knees over toes, down and away. As we get towards that balance, have that balance aid as needed. Knees over toes. Try to find a rise, pressing the inside of the heels forward for three, two. Heels find the floor. Grow to tall. Point. And close. And close. Nice. Shake it up. Excellent. Shoulder blades next. And then moving on to those hips again. With the arms in front, elevate the shoulders and then down. Elevate the shoulders and down. Now keeping the hands in about the same place, protract those shoulders rounding forward and retract back. Protract forward and retract back. Then reach the arms out to the side like a T and from here the same thing. Elevate the shoulders and pull. Elevate the shoulders and pull down and then round forward, driving from the armpit and squeezing from those rhomboids or shoulder blade muscles. And we'll turn one more to the front, one more to the back, and safely approach your overhead position. In the overhead position, same thing, let's elevate the shoulders and shrug and pull. One more of each, elevate and pull. Protract, rounding forward, retract, squeezing together and one more protract, one more retract, and pull those arms back down to the original position. Add a little shake. From here, Lauren will get to the floor, and nice little hip car. Open up those hips in a nice little hip circle. Some of those favorite movements from our morning routine. From the floor. Let's use our hinge, because it's swing class. Hip hinge, well it's not swing class, it's kettlebell class. Push those hips back, keep the vertical shin, from here, we'll break our rules where we tip forward and we'll find all fours with your knees underneath your hips and your hands underneath your shoulders. Gently bend one knee so your ankle comes close to your bum. From here, that knee is just going to lift slightly off the floor, compressing into the socket. Let's first do hip flexion. That means bring that knee towards your chest. Keep your tailbone tilted long and hold. 
From here, we're gonna lift that out to the side, holding for a second. We're gonna drive around the circle, so that knee is gonna draw a circle out to the side, the heel is gonna lift towards the ceiling, ending up out the back like you're kicking the ceiling. As you're here, you're still square to the four. Feel that glute activate, pull the knee back underneath. Let's reverse it. From here, keep that knee bent, kick the ceiling. Ribs to hips, punch in the stomach. Then open up that leg to the side. From there, that knee comes around towards the elbow chest, pulling underneath in hip flexion, and then placing it back down where you got it. Take a second off those hands if you need to. You don't need to spin, but if you'd like to, join me. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Tailbone long. Bend the knee. Flex foot. Well, I have a flex foot, either pointed or flexed. Knee lifts off the floor, pulls to hip flexion. From here, it lifts out to the side. It draws the circle all the way around to the back. Hip extension here, square up to the floor. Keep those ribs, hips braced and then pull the knee to return it underneath. Repeat in the opposite direction. Knee stays bent, extend to kick the ceiling, square to the floor. Open up the leg to the side. Draw that circle all the way around, knee towards elbow. Knee comes underneath, back to parallel legs, and gently relax. Press the floor away to extend. Excellent. In our tall kneel position here, or standing if the knees have said that's too much for now, assemble the arms in a W shape. From here, once elevate those shoulders as a shrug and commit to pulling those armpits down, elbows towards the hips. Extend the elbows out to the side as a T, nice and control. If we're holding a kettlebell, we'd wanna make sure that those armpits are anchored in nice and strong from underneath. In this T-shape, return the elbows towards those ribs, assembling in that W. If allowed, go through the T towards the Y. Those armpits are pulling down heavy as the arms extend fully at the elbows, shooting laser beams out of those fingertips. If you're shrugged, take that opportunity to pull down and then return to the W. Perhaps for one more, the T or the Y, nice and control, set those shoulder blades and extend the elbows through the T, perhaps towards that Y, extending, holding, bringing those biceps towards the ears there, and then pull back down, assemble in the W, finish with the palms facing forward at our sides. From here, let's do a mobility get up all the way up. So we'll start in that cuddle. With your pretend weight at your side, a nice firm grip, including that pinky finger, roll and press. Take the hand away, place it at the side. First movement of the get up is that hip extension, pushing through the floor, ending up on the elbow. From here, just pull the elbow towards the hip and then place that hand across the chest. Next, transition to our tall sit. Pack the shoulder, push the floor away to bridge, sweep the leg underneath the shoulder. Then press the floor away, square up the lunge, do the hula bits there to just find center and level in the hips, and then stand up and then shake it out. Let's review Lauren's two foot hinge and return to the floor in the get up in a moment. Let's. With your feet slightly wider than your hips, chuppity chip, push those hips back. Check it out. Feet are gripping the floor. Shins are vertical. Hips are back, feeling load through hamstrings and glutes. Core is braced. Now, gently break those rules. Come on down to the floor. Walk yourself out. Find your knees, and we'll flip to our backside again to get up on the other side. And now it's what side did I do? I'm pretty sure it was my yeah. left. No, it was my right. So I got a cuddle on my left. Here we go. In that cuddle position, I'm pretty sure I'm on the same <laughs> side, so I'm gonna switch it out. I'm cuddling on the right, and I press that right hand to the ceiling. The arm out to the side is about that belt line height extended. Extend through the hip next, pushing the foot into the ground, 
and then pull on the floor. Pull that elbow. We'll groove a press a little later today. Pull the elbow to the hip, place the hand across the chest. Then toss it next, push the floor away to bridge, sweep, slide the hand up the leg, square up your lunge. Again, little casual hula hoop in there. Find center, press away, and assemble tall. Tall. Add a shake. A little bit of a different version of a hinge next. Let's set up with our two feet, two foot stance, sorry, and set up the hip hinge. From here, let's transfer weight to one leg. Then that straight leg will reach around the back and hold for about five seconds here, challenging that balance on the front and the vertical nature of that shin in the front. Then extend to tall. Reassemble, hinge stance, hinge on those hips next. I'll transfer that weight to my left leg now. That straight leg rounds out the back. And for five seconds or so, learn to create some stability and feel load on those hamstrings by perhaps extending that knee just a little bit. Then to tall. One more time each side. Open up, set up the hinge. Our shoulders are over tops of those knees. Press to one side. The single leg rounds out the back. And again, we wanna keep our shoulders square to the floor, inclusive of the hips. And then extend through. Open up one last time. Hinge, transfer weight. Point out the back, keep the foot on the floor, aim to keep that shin so vertical in the front, squared shoulders, and then extend back to tall. Shake it out. Hitting up our first loaded position with our kettlebell today, the firing range. Progress to that arm bar if you know what's up, but spend some time in the firing range first. I'd like to share a little treat with you, if you will. A treat? A treat. Is it chocolate? No, not that mm. kind of treat. Training tip more than a treat, really. If we're committed to doing the get up on the right side, stand with your right foot really close to your kettlebell. Then drop that inside leg back in the lunge. Then open up. Then hinge on the hip. Toss it. And then kind of just make it out. Whoa. Make it up from there. And then here we are. That kettlebell is nice and close. Full of tricks. First movement today with the bell, the firing range. Let's assemble in that cuddle position with our packed shoulders. Two hands on the bell. Roll to your back with the shoulder blade packed. <gasps> Press to the firing range. At this position, we'll take the other hand away as we are allowed. Hold for time. The chin tuck the firm grip holding onto that kettlebell and spotting with the other arm as we need. The shoulder is packed, the arm is vertical in relation to the floor, and for five more seconds, build tension and awareness underneath of that bell. Two hands on, assemble in that cuddle position, pull the bell to the ground, and then on our side. Switch, same Switch. thing on the other side now. My pinky finger is near the corner, so the bell handle lines up with my callus line. From there, I'll grip it firmly, take my breath to prepare, roll to the back, press with two hands, and slowly as allowed, take away that other hand. Place it out to the side, and modify that hair piece as you need. Pack the shoulder, aiming to keep that forearm vertical, in relation to the floor, hold for time, spot as needed, and use a load that builds confidence and tension, with a little bit of stress, but ultimately we can put two hands on, return that load to the ground safely, the cuddle, ha, ha, and then I think we're squatting, aren't we? Ooh, the hinge drills. So no rules, Lauren, no rules, maybe even no hands. Let's get up, Let's shake it out, and the shadow swing. All right, shadow swing time. With your feet slightly wider than your hips, let's take our arms out front. Right away, retract your shoulder blades, pulling them back, and slightly down like you're juicing that orange in your armpits. This is the top position. 
as well in this top position. Are your glutes squeezed? And could you take a punch? Doesn't have to be that hard. Now, as you stay here, slowly lower your arms by driving through concrete, engaging those lats. Don't move yet, don't move yet, don't move yet. Better move, hip hinge goes back. Keep the hands tight to the zipper of your pants. Load up the glutes and hamstrings. Drive into the floor and out as you extend your hips through. Ready, pow, bell floats. Pause at the top, are your blades retracted, your abs and butts? Same thing, fall. Don't move, don't move, don't move, move. Hip hinge, load up hammies and glutes. Push into the floor to extend hips through. Whammo, bell goes flying, pauses at the top. Retract, brace one more time. Bell falls, play chicken, then move. And last time, drive hips through. Pew. Bell floats to the top, punches, punches, and relax. Shaking that out. Nice. Working on those shadow swings to help us stay strong and safe as we progress to the kettlebell swing. Low carries are next, and we'll utilize that hinge to pick up this load. Many ways to do it, but for today, I'll turn that handle perpendicular to the feet. Yeah, let's give you some more room there. Perpendicular to the feet. Set up the hip hinge and grab onto that bell with one hand. Check. For a moment, rotate the upper body looking away from the loaded arm side. Then pull on that kettlebell with those armpits like reducing that orange as per Lauren, and then Square up the shoulders. Let go, stand tall. Preload, did you feel a little bit of that resistance there or was it feeling like a feather? Pull on that kettlebell just a little bit to preload and aware your body as to how heavy that just might be. Hip hinge, without looking at it, try to find that kettlebell. Then the shoulder might be open, so let's oversell that for a second longer. And then pull on the kettlebell Square up the shoulders, pretend to lift as to preload, then let go and stand up tall. Let's repeat that again, but perhaps lift it. The preload, lift, and hold in the low carry for 20 seconds. Hip hinge, hand on, shoulder square, pack shoulder, lift to tall, assemble the feet, and hold for time. Push those feet into the ground. Squeeze your butts like Lauren said. Maybe don't punch yourself in those abs, but check in with them and hold for about 10 more seconds. If this is a new load for you, this is a great way to get used to it. And if it's a good old friend, just say hello. Three. Open your stance, <laughs> place it on the ground, and body weight up. Whew. Often I say to Lauren after this practice, whoa, that holds make me hot. Use the core strength and feel that requirement of using a load. Hip hinge, set it up, pack the shoulder. Feel the safe tension through our preload and then hoop, core brace, hip extension through. Adjust your stance. The load is likely to tip you to its side. So engage those other side abdominals to stay nice and tall. The feet are pressing out, the glutes firmly squeezed, we're braced and we're breathing. For about five more seconds, we'll hold this load, open up our stance, and return to the floor and body weight up. Hmm. Add that little shake. From there, add a push up or two as we'll return to holding our kettlebells in a moment. Let's set up that hinge, sidestep your bell, hinge, then tip forward. Assemble your feet in that press-ups position. Modify to the knees if we need. Let's do two push-ups, five seconds down. One, two, three, four, and hook. press. If you did it from the knees like me, this time maybe you lift and repeat. One, two, three, four, hook. and press. Tip your tailbone to the ceiling. Walk back to the hinge. Extend. And then Lauren, the goblet. The goblet told. We will stand, pull catch. We will stand over top of our bell. 
Using our hinge, let me show you one first. It's a little quick and then we'll do it all together. Use our hinge, you'll grip the top of your belt. Pull like you're zipping up your coat. Regrip, catch down the horns. Holding tight, not resting on your chest. Regrip, hinge to put down. Good. Standing over top of your bell. Use your hip hinge. Grip the top of the bell. Pack your shoulders. You're gonna pull, regrip down the horns. Now check in, elbows in, ribs to hips, bell off your chest. Punching, squeezing, bracing, breathing. <laughs> For how many more seconds can you hold I that, think Ian? Two. Two more seconds? Mm -hmm. Five, <laughs> three, two, regrip at the top, hip hinge. Bell comes down, Ooh. up without. Yep, the sweat taps are on. We're gonna shake that out. I'd like to repeat that one more time. Oh. Was that load safe, strong, and secure in your hands? Or were you leaning back, really hanging on? Modify the load as you need, add a wiggle in between, and one more time in that goblet hold. Pull catch. Hip hinge, grip the top, zip, pull, regrip, pack shoulders. Brace dabs. I imagine I'm hanging out at the top of my chin up here. That's what I kind of visualize to engage my abs and glutes. For four, three, two, re grip, use your hinge. Up without. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Let's return to the floor and slow cadence on those push ups again using the hinge to get down. Sidestep the bell. Hinge check. Tip forward. Knees or from that high pot push-ups position, five seconds to the ground. One, two, three, four, hip. Core press up, and one more time. Hips higher than you think, bum squeezes of course. One second, hop. And then from here, walk back to the hinge and extend to tall. Shake it out. Hmm. I know we did two sets in that goblet hold already, and I'd like to continue with a goblet hold, this time adding our squat. If that load was too heavy, or this is a brand new movement for you, I recommend holding that imaginary beach ball or a light dumbbell in that same position as we look to pattern our squat. Opening up your feet, sumo stance, or your personalized squat position with feet slightly turned out, pull yourself low. We'll grab onto the horns where that movement ended the last time. Take a breath, using the elbows anchored into the legs, core braced, yep. biceps curl up, up, stand up tall. Pull ourselves low, up, to tall. Pull ourselves low, core braced, yep. up, last time down. Extend those elbows with control. Adjust the bell as needed and then stand up, body weight style. Whew. Shake it out. Shake it out. From here, Lauren's gonna groove our press, conditioning those shoulders to tolerate the overhead movement. All right, imaginary 500 pound bell for you. Pick it up and put it in that rack position. Maybe 100 pounds, five is a little much. Pack your shoulder, a little bit of a retract and a depress to engage your lats. Vertical forearm. From here, squeeze your butts, brace your core, hup, start pressing that bell for five, four, three, two, to your safe overhead. Once you get there, is your elbow fully straight? Your shoulder's still packed. Now you have to pull that 100 pound bell back down. Pull it down, engage that lat, vertical forearm, all the way back into the side, hold it for a second, and then let it go. I try so hard that I get a lat cramp every time. I hope you do too. Same thing, second side. Rack, 100 pounds. Retract and depress that shoulder a bit to engage lat. Now, use all the muscles to help you press that bell towards your overhead. Keep pressing, keep pressing, keep pressing. Get it there, straighten the elbow, show me you got it. Now, pull back down. Elbow pulling into your side. Single arm chin up if you want a visual all the way back in, and then relax. Whew. Ooh, that's a heavy bell. That's a heavy imaginary bell. Another set of squats. Was three a good number? Let's stay there, or could we add one to it? I'm gonna try to add. In that squat stance, 
body weight style, pull yourself low. Then tip the bell. You might need to nestle into a position optimal to do the curl. And with the chest proud, core engaged, biceps curl up. That counts as one. Now pull ourselves low. There's two. Pull ourselves low. Three. And could we add one more? Pulling low, standing up, returning to the ground, extending the arms, and body weight, return. Add that little shake. One more time on that overhead movement. All right, pick it up again. Imaginary bell to rack position. Forearm vertical, elbow in at your side, shoulder packed. Engage muscles. <laughs> Press that bell. All the way overhead for three, two, one. Your overhead, shoulder packed, elbow as straight as possible. Now pull that bell down with control again. Pull, 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 pull. Returning to that rack position. Hold it for a second. Let it go. Shake it out. Same thing, second side. Rack. Shoulder down, lat engaged. Vertical forearm. Press. Your glutes help you press. Your core helps you press. Your shoulder helps you press. All the way to overhead. Repack. Pull down. Engaging that lat as you pull. For three, two, all the way in. And relax. Excellent. <sighs> Swing time. A squat. The hallmarks of our squat include feet perhaps wide, pulling the buttocks below the knees, keeping the shoulders above those hips. And then hoop, we can stand hoop. up. What are those hallmarks of the hinge there, Lauren? Well, I just like to see this chat first because I just love. Great. When Who's chatting? Oh, good. We're crystal clear. Great. Great. So the hallmarks of our squat. Well, let me tell you about our hinge. Yeah, I'm into it. Our hinge, we dropped our hips lower than our knees in our squat. In our hinge, our hips stay higher than our knees. Our shins are vertical. Our chest, or chest is lifted slightly. Sorry. And then driving down in the floor to extend to tall. There's some maintenance going on we here. We have some exciting so. things happening in real bricks and mortar. So there's some banging yeah, going on. And some banging. Anyway, Great. let's try it again. Hip hinge, nice chest up, loaded through those hamstrings and glutes. Drive down and away, all the way to tall. Great. Okay. Earlier in that practice, we used the body weight hinge to transition to the floor, and Lauren cued us on that shadow swing to help with the swing. First, let's do a quick setup in that kettlebell and how to address it if we do go forward for our swing. It's a little funky dance step. Get your toes approximately touching that kettlebell, pivot on a heel, and then pivot on a toe, and then switch. Heel on that side, toe. Lauren likes to rock up and down a little bit. Your foot will find their preferred or natural position. And then setting up your hip hinge, two hands on the bell, which will be out in front. Then pull or tip that kettlebell onto its edge, pack those shoulders, and lightly at first, but pull on that kettlebell that it's almost moving and you feel that load on your hamstrings in the back. Then tip it forward, come up bare hands, check in, and let's repeat twice more. Body weight hinge, hands out front, grabbing onto the handle. Then tip onto an edge, pack those shoulders again, and pull on that kettlebell just a little bit to feel as if you're almost falling backwards, but don't, and you'll reset the bell and oh. stand. One last time. We My said legs three. are burning from that. We said three. Okay, so those isometrics can be a lot of work without actually doing the action. The preload is important. So Lauren has the hinge, the hands are on, we tip the bell. The neck and head are neutral, looking just in front of the kettlebell. And for a couple more seconds, mm. hold that tension, tip the bell, come up. And like Lauren did a second ago, shake it out. I've never been a nice fan of and loose. those isometrics. They're so hard. Nice and loose. Which is good. Returning to the push-up. Little doubles in that push-up effort today. Let's open up our stance. Utilize that hinge, tip forward, hands on the floor, two push-ups as a maximum, nice and slow. Five, four, Oops. three, 
two, press. Last one, squeeze your bum, four, three, two, and press. Walk your hands back, hinge position, and stand. Do you want to show or I'll show? Where am I showing? hike pass. Just oh, I do love me a pass. hike pass. This isn't holding, it's stationary. We actually get yeah. to move. So we set up in our dance if needed, behind your bell. Rock, hip hinge, grip. In our hike pass, we grip the bell, pack, brace core, pull to zipper, park. Pull to zipper, park. I'm pulling with my lat and engaging my core. We should do two hands for now, up without. Nice. Let's do this together. Standing behind your bell. If you needed that dance step review, it was big toes on. Pivot, 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 pivot. Rock, hip hinge, grip, tip bell, pack your shoulders. Inhale, brace, pull zipper to, uh, to. Hands to zipper. <laughs> Hands to zipper, I'm sorry. Pull the bell to the zipper, park. Pull bell, park. Let's do two more. Pack, pull. Last one, pack, pull. Park. Up without. Whew. Do you have one more set of push-ups in there? Let's check it out. Side, yep. side, side step the bell. Hinge, tip, hands anchor, hips high, core engaged. Five, four, three, two, and press. And one more. Super slow to the floor. Press. Nice and control, walk back to the hinge, adjust the feet as you need, and extend to tall. Wiggles aren't obligatory, but definitely would feel nice. So we can assemble the hike pass into repetitions of our swing. If you're brand new to the swing, join us if you wish, or just watch and reinforce the deadlift. Options for this next series of drills include setting up your hinge, two hands on, to tall and return. Deadlift. Repack, setting up your deadlift. If you've done that for the past couple months and you're interested to progress, join us as we go in an I go, Lauren goes, swing series. Pick a team, team blue or team white. We'll do five repetitions of our swing. I'll start with two hands on the bell, setting up, I'll pull it and swing it for five. Strong exhale as those hips snap through. You can also practice your chop and pop timing with Ian here, or that shadow swing, or your deadlift. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know go? about this. <laughs> with the mic set up, I'm not exactly sure. So we'll All take right, it easy. Team here. blue. Five swings. One and two and three, four. Go last one. Strong ideas for rest include at least one to one work rest ratio. Going I go lower and goes gives me that time to rest. And I like to delay a little bit also longer. Also being a chatty cap, he gives you some time And again for, rest. for five. All right, one, two, that push down and away to stand up tall. At the top, abs and glutes. It's your abs stopping you at the top, not that low back. Yeah, Boom. that core brace that we practice in the push up and breathing from underneath that shield, like in the warm-up. Timing the swing at the hands, approach the hips groin, then we hinge. One more set for today. Open stance, hinge. And boom. At the top of that swing again, the top means the arms are out front chest, elbows ramrod straight, pulling those kneecaps up. Whew. Stay loose. One final set. We started strong, we finished stronger. A little bit of duress and stress on the heart right there. Add those shakes, continue to breathe to help recover. Let's put those kettlebells off to the side and one final bodyweight drill to finish. <gasps> hinges always. Hinge. Hinges, hinges. There Everybody we go. Everybody everywhere. Coming back to that squat, continuing that heart rate as it is a little elevated here. Let's pull ourselves low and press to one standing leg. Then extend and toe ball heel. And press to the other standing leg. Extend, land toe ball heel. Continue, perhaps climb, extend, toe ball heel. Balance, extend, 
toe ball heel. Always coming right to center each time in that Climb squat. Climb the leg, break some rules and tip perhaps Ooh. a little bit and down. And then again, Climb the leg, keep those hips extended, down. And then let's just go down a little bit, so only to the knee, mm. and extend, and down. To the knee, extend, and down. And then finish on the ankle, extend and down. That was a little rushed. And then one more time here, extend, and land. And up, and of course, the wiggle. Beginner oh. body weight and bell. Check that felt like check. good we times. Got a lot done. Got a lot done. Worked on those squats and hinges, the push ups and presses with that kettlebell, taking our time so that we stay strong and safe and have fun. And think about that press anytime. You got Reaching it. Reaching the top shelf, pulling it down. Changing the shower head. Keep the armpit engaged. Not changing. I know. Changing the position. Yeah, you yeah. Know? The position, that pressure reading there. So, Apply these techniques everywhere in your life for fun, fitness, and to stay strong. My name's Ian. Lauren. Thank you for joining us. I'll be here tomorrow at Bar, Friday with Restore and I'll Recharge. I'll be here too. Forgot to oh, tell you. nice. Nice. We'll be here all week refining the sound, refining the lighting, and finding our strength. Have a great day. Take care. See you soon. See you soon. Goodbye.